Hi again YouTube, uh, I'm now here to take a look at the UK Transformers Armada comics which came out in uh, 2003. Now this was exciting for me to after 10 years finally see another Transformers comic in the UK as I've always been a big supporter of them even though they have declined in quality quite drastically over the years. Um, now issue 1 here came with a free sticker album which was based on Generation 1 and it had a small section in for Armada, so that was quite cool to collect, even though I'm not normally one to collect sticker albums because I get bored of it after a while. I did get most of the stickers for that. I just don't like buying things where I can't actually see what I'm buying and you end up with doubles and you have to buy loads, just don't see the point. Um, now unfortunately with this comic it did seem skewed a lot more towards kids. I mean you can see straight away from the artwork here, it just doesn't look very good. It looks a bit kiddified and simplistic. Simon Furman is doing the writing though, so it's nice to see him come back again, but I think even he, you know, I guess the uh, the publishers told him that they wanted it to be skewed more towards children. So I never got into this comic, and I think that's why it ended up failing, because it was did seem so dumbed down and simplistic, and even the artwork just looks bloody horrible, <laughs> in my opinion. No offence to whoever drew it, I'm sure they were, you know, told to do it in a more simplistic way but it didn't really appeal to me and you started seeing more crap like this which is unfortunately very common now in UK comics is that it's just full of puzzle pages and things you get you know a few pages of comic strip and the rest of it's puzzle pages and colouring in and fact files and things now before in the old days if you got a fact file you'd have a picture of the character there and then loads of text about him here but I, I don't know if kids don't have the attention span now now you have to have a huge great picture and then just a few little sentences here and there just dumbing down the whole thing that really coloring in page the poster power competition featuring some of the toys how to draw megatron and hang on, back to the actual comic strip itself which is kind of retelling the, uh, the the cartoon story from the first few episodes to an extent. And then we've got a letters page where people are sent in pictures and things. Another puzzle page, wasting space. Issue two. Now this uh, had a, a big poster of all the Armada toys, which was actually quite a nice gift I think I think I actually did have it up on the wall for a while it was kind of fun seeing all the toys that were coming out more of the comic strip here now to, to be honest the strip itself when you got reading it, it wasn't too bad but it, it was still a bit simplistic and the artwork just really put me off to no end it did start to improve as the series went on but by that point I think it was just too late it's surprising because Transformers was quite popular at the time, but I guess just still not quite popular enough until the movie came out to sustain a comic in the UK. So you got more puzzle pages and crap. Coming in. Now this is the poster. It's going to be a bit big for me to open up on camera really to show you the whole thing. But you can get the gist of it hopefully. So it basically just it's just a big advert for the toys, but I do like these sort of things. I remember having one for Master of the Universe back in the day, which had like a checklist on it, and I think they had these. For, they used to have those sorts of things for the old Transformer toys as well. So I did enjoy that. Competitions and things, games. That's the comic strip. Should make a Tron up to no good. It is basically the story from the first few episodes of the cartoon series at this point. I just whizzed through it quickly because it's the same old thing. You see, another thing that's common now, well, common, I mean, you, you can't get a comic in the UK without it having some plastic piece of junk sellotaped to the front of it. And this had begun back in the early noughties here. You can see it's got uh, some kind of plastic toy watch is coming with the next issue. It's just sheer, for the sheer hell of it. It's a real shame that comics can't be sold on their own merits of actually being a comic now. But... Uh, I don't think there's a single comic now sold aimed at kids that doesn't have a plastic toy stuck to the front. And that boosts up the price by a couple of pounds as well. So you're paying the best part of £5 for a comic of a few pages just because they, they feel they have to have these horrible toys stuck on the front. And I've got Andrew Wildman on the art here. 
who uh, he used to do some brilliant art for the old uh, Transformers comics, but once again, I just think that uh, they were told to simplify it somewhat. I don't really blame the artists themselves. I don't think it was by choice that they made it look the way they are, but it's nice to know that the old creative team are back again, even if their hands are being tied. And some more original stories at this point, not just retelling the origin. More games and profiles and puzzle pages. I always hated this stuff when I was a kid. I, honestly, I wanted the comic strip. Any Anything other than comic strip was just a waste of time for me in the comics. I hated it. And they would have these tales of the mini-cons, which seemed even more skewed towards children than the main title. Where it'd be just a, a kind of comical backstory about the mini-cons getting up to mischief and hijinks. And you see with the next issue, a disc launcher. Now these things are just everywhere. God knows how many disc launchers must be filling up landfills at this point. Because comics in the UK are always giving away plastic disc launchers. The movie Transformers comic in the UK was notorious for it. Just every other dish was a disc launcher. Now here the Minicons are going home. I haven't actually looked at these comics for years. So, to be honest, I don't really know what the hell's going on in them. I can't remember the stories. They never stuck with me. But it uh, seems like the Minicons are going back to Cybertron here. Megatron's arrived to try and stop them. Battle ensues. More puzzle pages. That file on Hotshot. Let's colour this in. Poster. Games. And here. Another tale of the Minicon. Lee Sullivan on the artwork here. They really are getting the old school creative team back. This one doesn't seem as goofy as the last one. The Minicon tale from the last issue. <clears throat> as I say, as the comic progressed, it did seem like they were trying to improve it. Hotmail. <laughs> That was through the next issue, uh, some model paper aeroplane, Astro Flyer, as they tried to market it. And we're on issue five now. Not a bad cover, Starscream in the, on the airstrike patrol, are they? I actually was a big fan of Armada at the time. I, uh, I hated it to start off with because it just seemed like a rip-off of Pokemon. It was the same thing every every week. They were just Chasing another Minicon, chasing another Minicon, but about halfway through the series, once they started introducing more characters and they were going to head back to Cybertron and Unicron was kind of lurking as a threat in the background, I actually got really into it. It is one of my favourite Transformer series now. Unfortunately, it was tainted by Energon and Cybertron, which were awful, in my opinion. Awful animation, boring, dragging storylines. So I like to kind of ignore Energon and Cybertron and think of Armada as its own thing. The puzzle pages and the posters again as always. I'll skip through them pretty quickly. And uh, another tale of the Minicon again. I think Simon Furman did pretty much all the stories for this comic, from what I can tell so far. Some focusing on the airstrike patrol. I think they're called the airstrike patrol anyway. I might be a might be a mistake in there. Like I say I can't remember too much of it at that point. This is quite a nice cover. Issue six. With some of the newer characters. Andrew Wildman again on the art. You, you can just about tell it's his work, actually. 
just a, a more simplified version. Like I like as the cover showed, it's kind of introducing the newer characters. Jet fire and smoke screen. Profile and smoke screen there. Booster based on the story. Onto the towers and the minicons again. Introducing another minicon team. Seems like uh, each tale of the minicons is kind of basically introducing us to another, to a different team, which isn't a bad idea really. Advertise those toys. Letters page. Next issue from here, you get uh, some little glow in the dark plastic stickers, which uh, I actually did have some of those up on the side of my binders that I keep the comics in at one point. I'm not sure where they've all gone now. Wall glowers. That's not a bad cover either, actually. Megatron and Optimus Prime, either side of the Star Saber. Starscream getting his hands on it. Strange here, where they've drawn Starscream with his wings kind of facing upwards. They haven't uh, folded them down, almost like they've basically mistransformed him or based it on a, on a mistransformed toy. Yeah, the artwork's not too bad now. I always like this. It. Uh, Basically, was kind of a news page about what was going on in the world of Transformers, advertising new episodes that were coming on TV and new toys that were coming out. And it, I think it was on one of these cyberspace pages that I first learned that they were releasing a Unicron toy, which got me <laughs> super excited. And I think that very night, I got my dad to drive me to Toys R Us to get one. I could not wait to get myself a Unicron toy. I was like 19 years old at this at this time as well. <laughs> Finding Nemo. God, was it that long ago that film came out? 2003. Not that I've ever seen it, but I mean, I've heard a lot about it. Lee Sullivan back on the art again. Are these Minicon Tales? Transformers Bed Spread. Now. That doesn't say what the free gift is for the next issue. Oh, I can see what it is. Stickers. See, this is the actual cover. Kind of like uh, with some of those Generation 2 comics, where the stickers would come over half the cover at the front here, and then the rest would be on the back. It's issue 10, no, issue 8 we're on now. So less issues than I thought. Decepticons are back on Cybertron. I really should go back and reread these actually. Maybe they won't be so bad as I remember them. It's these later issues don't look too bad. File on Red Alert, poster, cyberspace again, see the advertising City of Fear, um, the Titan trade paperback of the uh, the old UK Transformers stories, advertising some of the new toys that are out. Fat files, more towers and the minicons. Lee Sullivan and Simon Furman again working on it. A 
Let's page. And then next issue. What do we get next issue? Marble shooters. I'm sure I must still have them lying around somewhere in a box. Now this is the last issue that was released. And I don't think it realised it was going to be the last issue either. So I've got a picture of Thrust on the front there. I think that's a nice cover. It's probably my favourite cover of the lot actually. I think it's, uh, it looks good there. So, and then the artwork in this looks better as well. In my opinion, this strip here, Andrew Wildman seems to be putting more effort in. Or they've got someone better on the colours or whatever, but it just the detailing is standing out a lot more. It's just it looks like there's more effort being put into it. And it's so typical. <laughs> the best issue of the of the series, and it's the last one. So it really is starting to look more like Wildman's old artwork from the from the uh, Generation One comics. I think Starscream's basically up to no good. Planning on overthrowing Megatron. You can see here he's uh, getting in contact with some rogue Minicon team that he wants to unite with against Megatron. But never gets continued. That's uh, little cut out things that I guess you can stand up and fire your marble shooter at. That came through with the comic. Profile on Jetfire. Puzzles and stuff and posters. Ah, so here we are. This is the cyberspace one that introduced me to the Unicron toy. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. <laughs> you would not believe how excited I was to finally get a Unicron toy. Tales of the Minicons. Once again, this, you know, it's a lot more action. There seems to be a lot more going on with the story. A lot more detailing to the artwork. If it started off like this, uh, it may have lasted longer than it did. Optimus Prime Christmas card that you can cut out there, <laughs> or photocopy, it's kind of cool. I might actually photocopy that and, <laughs> and give them out next year. Starscream's hate mail. <laughs> I guess Starscream's answering the letters page. And then on the back here, advertising next issue, where there would have been some free glow-in-the-dark figurines come with it. Which would actually have been kind of a cool free gift, but unfortunately it never happened. Then I guess the sales weren't good enough. And it's not like the old days where you'd get a proper last issue. With the Generation 2 comic, with the Generation 1 comic, they released a proper final issue that said, oh, we're sad to say goodbye, but this is the end, and you never know, it might be another Transformers comic one day, blah, blah, blah. Nowadays, if a comic's not selling, the company just stop it. There's no last issue, there's no warning, it just doesn't turn up in shops. That's it. Unfortunately, that just shows how little the UK industry cares at the minute about comics. But, there we go. So it's a shame that it ended when it did, just as it was starting to improve. Uh, but it uh, didn't last into 2004, it was purely in 2003. Well, thanks for watching. Um, there are a couple more Transformers series that came out after this so I want to do videos on. There was a one based kind of on the movies that would alternate between the movies and the cartoon series. Uh, and now there's a, another one, a present one, based on Robots in Disguise. So I'm going to have a look at those next. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.